afternoon. It's uh, Sunday, 15th of January, 2023. First time I've been able to say that this year, so uh, a happy new year to you all. Um, just to bring us up to date before, uh, this video is going to take up from where we left off, which was, I think, uncovering Josephine. So that's what's in this video. But uh, just to bring you up to date with uh, current affairs, a couple of things, what I'm actually working on at the moment, you can see here I'm doing a bit more sewing. And what I'm doing is making the canvas skirts or boots for the um, mast and mizzen where they go through the deck. You've obviously got to protect that area, otherwise water will just obviously run down below. So you have like a canvas skirt that goes around the base and that's what I'm doing. All of that will come up in uh, the next episode. That's not for this episode. I just want to bring you up to date with current affairs. Uh, what else is going on? Randy's away. She's been away for three days. I think she left uh, last Thursday. Um, sadly, the last of her uh, large family of Swedish aunties died over Christmas, so she's gone to the funeral uh, in Sweden, but she'll be staying with her sister in Copenhagen, which is where she's now. The funeral was on Friday. Uh, she's fine. Um, making the most of the trip over there to have a bit of a break from me. <laughs> and uh, so I'm finding for myself here at the moment and uh, trying to get on top of things. And so that's the next thing. We've given ourselves a 90 day um, program, a, 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 a task, if you like, a goal to get the boat finished in the next 90 days. And um, I produced this little chart here, which you can see. Those are the 90 days and the red crosses are the days that we've lost. In fact, I'm behind. I've got two more of those to cross off. And the green square in the top left-hand corner, the green square in the top left-hand corner, it, it represents jobs done. In other words, one job um, in uh, 12 days. It's been a funny time. I'm not gonna bore you with the uh, details, but we've had all sorts of things to contend with. Uh, not least the weather and a whole load of other stuff. Uh, so, uh, but we're we're still cracking on. We're doing okay. It's a bit of a chilly day. I've got all of the. I mean, for a change, it's not raining. That's been the biggest problem. Um, I've got uh, the doors and uh, all the hatches uh, open at the moment to to sort of air the boat out, which is desperately needed. So it's a little chilly in here. Hence the uh, over overcoat. Um, and yes, what should really have been, uh, what was designed as a motivational chart, me ticking off the red crosses of the days, as I say, the green ones are the jobs. Uh, although it was supposed to be motivational, it's actually, I'm not, I'm not sure it's working. It's, um, it's actually causing a lot of anxiety because I'm crossing off days which seem to be passing at the rate of about one an hour. Well, that's what it feels like anyway. Um, the jobs I've got to do, to be fair, some of the big involved and the ones I'm doing now, preparing the masts for stepping, which we hope, by the way, uh, will be quite soon. It could, won't, probably, yeah, it could be in the next episode, actually. Probably not, but it might be in the next episode. Let's hope. Uh, so, uh, yes, yeah, st stuff like that's a lot of stuff involved. So I count that as one job, you know, preparing for stepping involves all, putting all the running rigging on and everything. There's a bit of that in this, this uh, episode that I'm going to show you now uh, and other jobs you know on that list I've got a list somewhere here where is it down here I've got a little booklet here that's our 90 day job list book um, and in there there's by the way 50 jobs but um, some of those jobs in there I could probably do two or three in a single day so I'm hoping that my little green squares will catch up anyway I hope you're all well that's really all I wanted to say and I hope you enjoy this video which takes up from uh, the point where we uncovered Josephine, which was in the last episode, and uh, I'll catch you later. Hello everyone, I'm just about to post the uh, latest episode and I suddenly thought you might like to meet some of the crew, some of the boys and girls from Team Nielsen's and Co. Uh, just when Randy left uh, to go to the funeral in Sweden, uh, Nielsen's held their Christmas bash which had been postponed from a date uh, just before Christmas due to bad weather. Uh, it was held at the premises of a company called Whittle and Flame who are an enormous uh, quality charcoal manufacturer in the UK and for whom Nielsen's helped design and build their ovens. Um, it 
was hosted really by Matt of Whittle and, and Flame and a woman called uh, Genevieve Taylor who writes books on uh, cooking on, uh, with charcoal, uh, barbecue cooking. And I'll leave links below to both of them. They're both absolutely lovely people and fa fabulous businesses. Anyway, we had a really good time. So if you want to see how uh, British shipwrights celebrate Christmas, here's uh, uh, just a few short uh, clips um, which will introduce most of them there were a few people from Nielsen's that weren't art that weren't art weren't at that uh, do but most of them are there so uh, I hope you enjoy that catch you later Uh, if you're watching this then you will already have seen the process whereby we dismantled all of Josephine's uh, blocks, her rigging blocks. I'm now in the process of putting them all back together again. But I've got uh, lots of photographs on my iPad. If I just scroll through you can see there's a whole load of different photographs. There's a photograph, photograph for each block. That's uh, number two, number 23, block number six. And that's the one we're going to look at at the moment because that's the one I've just grabbed. So those were the component parts of block number six, which I photographed. And I've put here a list of things to replace. And in this case, pretty much most of it. Now the sheaves themselves, I counted up all the ones I needed. We ordered the new ones from a company in Germany called Toplik, which is, I think, the only place we can actually get them. And I don't know, again, whether you'll see this, but that's the, that's the little box of bits there. There are 14 and 13 in there, because I've already used four of them. Fortunately, I didn't have to replace any of the big ones, because these little fellas, 17 of these little fellas, get this, 400 pounds. Uh, the actual cost to Toplik was of 300 and 
around about 350, 340 euros, something like that. Then I had uh, 55 pounds extra duty because it's imported into the UK. So yeah, that little that little bit there, 400 pounds, unbelievable, absolutely. Way. While we're on the subject of uh, rigging, some uh, weeks ago, probably about a month ago, Tommy was showing me how to parcel and serve the steel cables, her shrouds, Josephine's shrouds. And I had, the only thing I had was this little Mickey Mouse, very small butter knife almost, wooden wooden handled kitchen knife, I think probably, probably might have been a butter knife at some stage, which I'd done the best to sharpen. And uh, I took that over with me and I, all I was doing was uh, cutting a little bit of, uh, you know, the, the, the yarn that you uh, serve the cables in. And I slipped and it just touched Tommy's one of his fingers and I thought oh my god I've cut Tommy and I said uh, obviously apologized profusely and he turned and looked at me and he said I don't think you need to worry Reg about that looking very very disdainfully at my knife which you know quite as he said you know was not for, not very likely to cut him it was so blunt anyway I to cut long story short I felt so um, embarrassed by that so I decided it's time to get myself a decent knife. And I did. I got one online and uh, talk about value. Here it is. My, my Urchin or My Urchin, I think it's called. It's American. £400 for those bits of plastic sheaves. And this, 80 quid for the whole thing. So it's got this lovely knife. Um, a sort of classic uh, rigorous shape blade. Beautiful leather case for it. Or sheath and a marlin's bite, a beautiful marlin's bite which fits in there. Fantastic, especially concern, you know compared with the shoes, it's brilliant. So anyway, um, so, back to, so back to the subject here. <clears throat> Just to give you an idea, this is why the sheaves needed to be replaced. This is fairly typical. They've used a mild steel um, spindle which has obviously corroded and rusted and is very gnarly now and you can imagine that sheave running around inside uh, outside that you can imagine that just sawing away at it and so you won't be surprised to see how loose that is and this is a good one by the way some of them are a lot lot worse than that so uh, my job is to put all of these blocks back together some I've rebuilt completely so you can see uh, this one is the throat halyard and that's all put back together again uh, that's the that's the sort of shackles, predominantly 99% of the shackles on the boat are these. Uh, now, these are all wrong. They These are sort of off the shelf consumer shackles and they're made out of mild steel. So you can see they wear, I don't know, you'll probably be able to see in there, but this is very badly worn. Some of them are a lot worse than this and most of them are actually seized on uh, in terrible condition. And we're replacing them with new uh, three inch shackles like this which are commercial high tensile steel so we're putting these nice new ones back in to replace them so that, that all gets replaced obviously these parts have to be replaced and as I've said we have you know we do now have new sheaves so that gets replaced in that so that just leaves one thing and that means the spindle how we're replacing the spindle we've got an eight mil bolt which fits beautifully in there looks so i use a grinder and i cut you know on four sides of the hexagon bolt head and then just cut off to whatever length i need and these are nice a4 stainless bolts As you can see, that didn't take very long. I've just taken the sharp edges off and around the block. You see, you get a really nice square end. So there you have the two together. So I just get them going. You can see it's starting to appear in there now. So get the sheave in before it goes too far. Yeah, that's lined up now. So I know I've got it lined up and it's not jammed on the sheave. There we 
go that's gone nicely into there look and the sheave is all running nicely in there look the nice new sheave so job done all I have to do as I say now is a new piece of leather over the top which I'll do later when my tacks come just been over and uh, talked to Tommy and he's just given me a, um, a short length of chain which I can cut links out of and I've cut my first link and put it onto the shackle so you can see that fits the shackle okay uh, and we'll change as you can see the orientation of the way that the block hangs by 90 degrees and allow me to link the big shackle to these small blocks uh, with small holes that the shackle won't go through. Once the uh, spindle is out of the center this will pull out and that's what's doing all the hard work. If you imagine that through there if I if I put that together for you you can see that that's where all the strength is that's what's doing the work okay that's where all the heavy lifting is done literally yeah. I could have done by the way what I and I will do on some of them put the shackle directly onto it okay but in this case I need to do more than that I need to change the orientation at which the block drops or, or hangs so by putting in that chain link, I can do two things. I can link the two together, and I can also change the direction in which the block hangs. So that goes on there. That now goes back into there. The sheave goes back inside. The square, remember, head has to fit this side. Uh, and there you go, Rob's your uncle, done. And it will still come apart because of course you can take that off, you know, to take away the block or anything. It just means that the block has now permanently got that round it. So. Uh, yeah, a little work. That's what I've got to do with about at least half a dozen. I've noted, noticed, for instance, on the uh, topping lift on the mizzen, that's going to have to be done as well to change the orientation. And where I don't want to change the orientation, I'll just put that straight onto the block. Well, that's still very usable, isn't it? That looks in good condition. There's nothing wrong with that. For attaching this purchase for the running max day. Hey, there we go, look. sheaves in this one the spindle I'll just give that a quick clean that's nice there's nothing wrong with that here's the sheaves very 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 different from the plastic ones that I'm using uh, these are they look like bronze to me I think they're bronze and they're very heavy and three of these in there that'll make that a very heavy block and they've got bearings in so that when this is inside it's not bearing on the actual sheave it's rolling on other pins which are also rolling so you get a nice smooth action and uh, not so much you, you know you won't wear out the actual sheave itself god only knows what they cost given the price of the plastic ones that i've that i've got you know that little bag that cost me 400 quid goodness only knows what these cost probably 400 quid each anyway we'll think about that so all i'm going to do is clean that up and um, put it in there so no high spots on it or anything so that's nice um, now this one I don't have to worry about because the shackle is easily going to go on there and it's uh, one of those um, right angled sheaves so it comes out you know I've shown you on early ones where I'm putting in a link like this so that by the time I've put my um, shackle on I can change the angle so, for instance, if I just put that shackle in there, the axis of the pin is top to bottom in this case here. Uh, but if I want to change that, what I have to do is first put a link in and then put the shackle on there. And now, and now you can see that when that goes on there, the axis of the pin is now a crossways. 
Now these do that job all in one. It's basically a shackle with a 90 degree twist in it. And they look in pretty good condition. So thankfully I don't have to replace those. So that's okay, we'll forget that. Well, there you are. I was actually quite pleasantly surprised. It didn't take much to get it out, to be honest with you. But that actually has pulled out of there quite well. I noted that it was the one nearest the end of the pin that was the sticky out one, and it's that one there. And to be honest, looking at it, it does have a slight flare on that one. So I'm just gonna give that a bit of a tweak inwards in the vise. I'll just put that in the vise and just give it a, a bit of a bend. Lynch, who we've had, who we've heard from uh, this week, as left is led by Mick Whelan, who joins us. In I can't believe anybody actually continued to operate the boat with it in that condition. It must have been so difficult hauling on the halyards and things, that, you know, blocks being seized. Shackle. And the shackle itself is good. It's uh, unlike most of the others, as I said before, it's a commercial grade one. There is some wear on the spindle there, look. You know. That goes back into there. That then goes into there. Back in with the sheave, the nice new sheave. There we go. Job done. And as the as the sail goes out uh, either side, it will now allow some movement. Look, okay, it'll allow the movement here nicely. So that's really good. Whereas when it was just that and the cable there, that was, you know, that was going to be quite tight. So here's an interesting one. I'm just about to start doing this. It's one of the main sheets blocks. Nothing wrong particularly with this. I mean, the the, the cheeks are all okay. The sheave, uh, the spindle's okay, and the sheaves are these lovely bronze. Interesting thing here is the state of the shackle. Um, it, it has to be surely one of the worst on the boat uh, to allow to allow a, a shackle on such an important part of the boat and one that by the way that is actually easy to get to this isn't at the top of the mast remember this is at deck level that is truly shocking um, this has got to go into the collection of horrors together with that shackle I showed you earlier. This is the sheave out of that block. Quite astonishing. That's the spindle, right? Okay, you could probably put two of those through there, I expect. Um, but rather than replace the sheave, somebody has used various bits and pieces. There's a collection, there's, there's a little collection of rings. There's one there that goes round there, so that goes inside there, look. <clears throat> so that would have um, bushed it out a little bit. And then there's another one that goes in the centre of that one. Look, <laughs> I don't know really what to say about it, to be honest with you. I can't imagine anybody really doing that. I mean, I can't think of a block on the boat that isn't going to cause a lot of trouble if it fails. The only ones I can think of are the little flag halyards. When it's raised, these two blocks actually come quite close to each other. And um, I noticed from my uh, toss, my Brian Toss, uh, Rigger's Apprentice, the complete Rigger's Apprentice, he talks about reeving in here. And I notice it says here, with blocks that have their sheaves mounted side by side, which these are, the manner in which the rope passes from sheave to sheave can make a great difference in hauling efficiency. And figure two nine, which is this one here, shows two double blocks reeved in the usual manner called lacing. Uh, the line travels in a spiral from one side to the other as it passes through the sheaves. This method is simple and easy to remember, but when blocks are hauled close to one another, called two blocked, which is what's that's two blocked, where they're close together, uh, the rope bears strongly against the cheeks of the block. You see where it's worn through there, look? It started to bear on it. So it says here, the rope bears strongly against the cheeks of the block, causing undue friction just when you need it the least. The alternative is right angle reeving, which is in figure 5.3 here. OK, so that's right angle reeving. Now you can see what's happened there. As the blocks come close together, this is that's how they'll sit. They'll sit more like that. OK, at right angles to each other. You know that right angle reeving is worth the effort. Less friction means the rope lasts longer, too. So that's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to follow the guidance in here and I'm going to weave it like that so that it ends up like that. So uh, that sounds like a really good idea to me. So that's really Just go outside and I'll show you what the problem is with some of the running rigging. Some of it was perfectly okay, um, and some of it not. So here is the here's um, Josephine's mizzen topping lift, port and starboard. So you've got all sorts of things going on here. You can see that's that that shot. I mean, it's just completely shot. You can see you can see the state that the rope is in. Now remember, we haven't used this. But 